Hello, I'm Rob Mazes, and today I'm talking to you on behalf of Music and Audio Tuts Plus. And this tutorial is going to be all about noise gating. So noise gates are one of the most powerful tools that you have at your disposal for editing and processing your voiceover, but they're also one of the most destructive tools and you can very quickly ruin a good voice recording with a poorly set noise gate. Now, first of all, why would you noise use a noise gate? Well, imagine you have a really long voiceover, perhaps it's a podcast or an audio book and it's over half hour, it could even be several hours in length. You don't have time to go through and edit out the gaps between all the phrases so that there's complete silence. You don't have time to edit out small mouth noises. You don't have time to edit out small kind of minor background noises like street noise, perhaps disturbances next door, noise from people walking around. You don't really have the time or the ability to go through three hours worth of audio and delete every single background noise. So what you can do instead is use a noise gate, which will do this automatically for you. Now, a noise gate functions pretty much like a gate, as you'd imagine. So when the volume of your audio goes above a certain level, and that's the threshold that you set, when it goes above that threshold, the gate opens and your audio comes through. But then when the volume drops down back below the threshold, the gate closes and doesn't let any audio through. So what we can do is we can set the threshold so that our voice is loud enough to open the gate and we can hear it. And then as soon as we stop talking, the background noise, the street noise, the mouth clicks, the weird mouth noises, all that kind of stuff that's lower in volume just gets completely kind of not deleted, but you can't hear it at all because the gate is closed. Now, that's what a basic gate would function like and this is why they're so destructive because if you set them wrong it can cut out your speech halfway through a word it can cut off the beginning and the end of your speech sometimes if you start talking quietly or you vary your dynamics a lot only the loudest bits get through and sometimes when you you talk a bit quieter it doesn't open the gate and you can't hear it at all as i'm sure you can imagine this can completely trash your voiceover so it's really important, first of all, to understand how a voice, uh, sorry, noise gate works, the different parameters. And then I'm going to tell you how you use a noise gate in voice so that there's absolutely no risk of it ruining your audio. And so it sounds natural and subtle, but at the same time gets rid of the background noise and saves you going through in editing. So first of all, let's go through each of the settings. Now, most noise gates have uh, four main settings, I'd say maybe even five. The most important one, of course, is threshold. And this is the level at which the gate opens. Now, this is going to be very different depending on how loud or quiet the volume of your audio is. So threshold literally just takes some experimentation. You want to find the sweet spot between the quiet stuff and your voice. And that will just require you listening through and tweaking it, which I'll show you at the end of this video. But the other important settings that you need to be aware of are attack time, release time, hold, and then this one, this Pro Tools noise gate is quite unique in the sense that it has both a range and a ratio. Normally it's one or the other, but we can use these very carefully to make our voiceover even more subtle. So attack time, that's how quickly the gate opens when the volume goes above the threshold, just like a compressor. As soon as the volume goes up, it doesn't just instantly open. It will take 10 milliseconds to open. So it's kind of like a short fade in. Release time is how quickly it takes the gate to close, to go from zero attenuation to full attenuation once the volume drops back below the threshold. So here, 80 milliseconds. As soon as I stop talking, it would take 80 milliseconds for the gate to fully engage and reduce the volume of the audio. And then we also have hold, and this is how long it holds the gate open once the volume drops. So if, for example, I stop talking, and you can see here the hold is set to 50 and the release is set to 80, when I stop talking, the gate will stay open for 50 milliseconds, and then it will gradually close over the span of 80 milliseconds, 50 being the hold and 80 being the release. So in total, when I stop talking, it would take 130 milliseconds to attenuate the volume. So they're the basic settings. We also then need to talk about range or ratio because this is the setting that most people ignore, but this is the setting that can make the noise gate a lot more subtler, a lot less destructive. And this dictates how much in volume the gate reduces 
the audio. So I was saying earlier about the gate opening or closing and that when it's closed, it doesn't let any sound through. Well, in fact, that's a very basic gate. What we can do instead is to say to the gate, well, instead of closing the gate and not letting any sound through at all, we can say, only reduce the volume of the audio by 20 decibels. So whenever the volume's below the threshold, we drop it by 20 decibels instead of just getting rid of it completely. And this is the key to creating subtle uh, noise gates because it's not as drastic. Instead of cutting to silence, it just reduces the volume significantly of the background noise, but it's still there, but it's just barely audible. But this means that it's not completely cutting to silence, which is what starts to sound a bit unnatural. So enough talking, I'm going to give you a demonstration. Here I've just got a voiceover. The background noise is quite loud because I was positioned about 12 inches away from the microphone because it was for a video, so it was just off screen. And you can hear there's just some very minor background noise, um, maybe from the computer, maybe from wind outside. It's just a tiny hiss that we could do with getting rid of. It's for a long video as well. It's over an hour, so I can't go in through and edit it. So a noise gate is perfect. Let's have a listen, first of all, with my recommended settings, which are two milliseconds for the attack, because if the attack was too quick, you'd get pops and clicks from it just instantly coming in. And if the attack's too slow, it won't affect and it won't open quick enough for speech because speech is pretty quick in comparison to a lot of instruments and vocals so two milliseconds for me works 90 percent of the time it's just quick enough to open for a word as soon as you start saying it um, maybe you can try one somewhere between one and two will always work release is slightly more um, variable i tend to start around 50 milliseconds and go from there but you want it to not cut off the ends of your words because obviously a lot of words get quieter and trail off and if your release is too quick it'll close the gate before your word is finished essentially so we want that around 50 could be quicker could be slower i'll experiment with that a bit but 50 is a good starting point and hold i'm actually going to drop to its lowest point again because speech is pretty quick when we finish saying a word we want the gate to close relatively quickly if it's starting to sound a bit unnatural, I will bring up the hold a bit so that it's adding a bit more time to the whole kind of release phase. Um, but really you want that pretty low. Threshold, like I said, will require some experimentation. So let's have a listen without the noise Over gate. a bit more depth of the recording stage and using professional acoustic treatment, uh, affordably still, to make your voice sound even better, we're going to go over more... So you can hear quite a lot of me moving around in the chair and gesticulating a lot. You can hear some clove movement, tiny, tiny bit of background noise. Now, when I engage the gate with the ratio quite low and the range, uh, sorry, quite low, you can see here it's reducing the volume already by minus, I'm going to guess that's around minus 40. Yeah, there we go. Range minus 40. So here you'll be able to notice that it's quite extreme it drops the volume so much that it sounds like there's complete silence between the phrases have a listen over a bit more depth of the recording stage and using professional acoustic treatment uh, affordably still to make your voice sound even better we're going to go over more advanced editing strategies to make your editing efficient and seamless and unnoticeable so you can create the perfect recording out of all your edits and we're also going to go over some other more exciting effects that will add decoration and excitement so you can hear it's not as bad as they, it can be because we've got the attack time and the release time around the right area. But it sounds a bit unnatural. It's noticeable. It's going to complete silence between them. Now, if all we do is increase the range and in turning this knob up, we're actually saying only reduce the volume by minus 16. So in a sense, we're also kind of decreasing the range. But let's try it around minus Over 10. Over a bit more depth of the recording stage and using professional acoustic treatment uh, affordably still to make your voice sound even better. So now you can hear it sounds very, very different. And perhaps this isn't reducing it enough. So let's try somewhere in the middle. Let's try somewhere around minus 25. Actually, let's go minus 20. Let's give that a listen. Over a bit more depth of the recording stage and using professional acoustic treatment uh, affordably still to make your voice sound even better. We're going to go over more advanced editing strategies to make your editing efficient and seamless and unnoticeable. So, you 
So there we go. It's starting to sound a lot more natural already. And simply because we've put that range to minus 20 instead of minus 40. So instead of closing the gate and completely getting rid of all the audio below the threshold, it's only reducing the audio below the threshold by 20 dBs, which it's still there. It's just a lot quieter. And it means the noise gate is not working as hard. It means that it's not cutting off the ends of our words as much because it's not as extreme everything just starts to sound a bit more natural. Now, always uh, on the side of caution. If you think that perhaps it's starting to sound obvious that there's a noise gate, it's better to have a tiny bit of noise than it is to completely ruin your voiceover with a poorly tuned noise gate. So now what I'm going to do is just play around with the whole time and release time. I think they need to go up a bit until it sounds kind of unnoticeable. You don't really want to know that it's there. But then after that, I'll bypass it and you'll hear the difference. So let's have a quick tweak. Over a bit more depth of the recording stage and using professional acoustic treatment, uh, affordably still, to make your voice sound even better, we're going to go over more advanced editing strategies to make your editing efficient and seamless and unnoticeable so you can create the perfect recording out of all your edits. And we're also going to go over some other more exciting effects that will add decoration and excitement and just give you that extra edge over the competition with your voiceover so imagine that for so there we go i'm pretty happy with that i'm going to carry on tweaking it but you don't need to sit here watching me just remember to err on the side of caution use the range in some other uh, doors and plugins it's got a different term you can also use the ratio if um, you use a higher ratio it'll be a lot more extreme so if there's not a range setting just try using a lower ratio somewhere near a two to one you can see here how it's affecting the rate that the audio drops off below the threshold so you can use that to make it more subtle low ratios range i'd say start around minus 20 and experiment from there and then you can see here i actually end up bringing the release quite a bit because i'm actually quite a uh, slow talker compared to some people um, but start around one or two attack start at 50 and bring up that on the release and then hold you want it pretty low threshold just tweak until you find a sweet spot where you can hear your voice all of the time. It never cuts out your voice, but it's cutting out the background noise. So hope that's helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rob Mazes, founder over at homestudiocenter.com, but talking to you today on behalf of Invato Touch Plus. Thanks for watching. Hope you find that useful. Now I'd like you to go away and experiment with your own voiceover and using a noise gate. It takes a bit of practice, but I think I might have got you 80% of the way there. Now you just need to apply that knowledge. So until next time.